Hi everyone, it's Maurice the Healthy Speechy. Um, today's video is on trachs. So this week, um, well actually for the past couple of weeks, I've been working with a patient. We evaluated the patient um, when she admitted to our facility or our floor. And we uh, tried to see with digital occlusion if she was able to phonate or cough or anything of the sort. What we found was well, she tried, she would open her mouth, nothing came out. And so when I released, there was a ton of backflow, which is the air that puffs out. Um, back pressure, backflow, not too sure which one's the correct term, but that's the long story short. So air pushed out, at which case I assessed that her trach was too big for her um, in relation to getting any sort of voicing or productive throat clearing or anything, even if we put a passing mirror on, um, the air would be able to come in. However, it wouldn't be able to come out because there was nowhere else for it to go. I did verify that the cuff was deflated because um, it was a cuffed tracheostomy. Um, and so after a lot of follow-up with the doctors, with the nurses who were extremely great at helping me advocate for this patient. Um, we were finally able to get a physician in to change out the trach size. So she went from a Bivona 8 um, to a Shiley 6. So the Bivona 8 was cuffed, um, which means it has a pillow pretty much and you fill it with air or saline and it puffs up to provide a good seal. Um, in this case, hers was deflated the whole time, um, but the tracheostomy tube was, in my opinion, too large for her. It was functional for what they needed at the time. However, in relation to speech and swallowing, it was too large. So they downsized her to a Shiley 6, and it's just a different brand. Um, and they look vastly different, to be honest, too, in relation to size and diameter and things like that. So anyway, so they downsized her to the Shiley 6, and it's a fenestrative cuff, and the inner cannula is also fenestrated. So there's openings on both of them to allow for better airflow. So I had the privilege of being there with a the pulmonologist as he did the swap out. I did ask for his permission. I introduced who I was, by chance I was scheduled to treat her at that time, so it worked out. Um, but I introduced who I was and what I was planning on doing. Sorry, my pup just came in. Um, what we had done so far, what my hypothesis was, and we went from there. So the doctor uh, set her up, respiratory therapist was there as well. They were able to decannulate and take out the full tracheostomy, um, clean her up a little bit, and then insert the new one. Um, and yes, so once we secured that, the doctor assessed and left, the respiratory therapist <clears throat> stayed there for a little bit longer, helping me to adjust as I was helping him to adjust more likely and make sure things were okay. And then once he left, I was able to do digital occlusion. I told her to take a deep breath in and then I occluded so the air had to come out the oral or nasal cavity. And I told her to say, ah, uh, and she did and i didn't cry which is pretty good on my part because i tend to get sentimental with these things um it wasn't completely clear but it was something and her smile lit up the room it was beautiful and she heard herself and it's huge so all that hard work and education and training that i was doing with her to explain where she is what the plan is how we're doing things why we're doing things a certain way Everything finally clicked and she understood, which was wonderful. So her mom ended up coming into the session who hadn't been there in a little while. And so I asked her, I was like, who's that? So the first words she actually said were my mom, which also made me sentimental. <laughs> um, it was a beautiful moment. Uh, she did say her name. She was able to say her son's name. We tried doing um, some pitch changes with some singing. And seeing where she was, I also tried to help her do productive coughs, um, throat clearing, and things of that sort. All this while on room air. So 
This patient had been on five liters uh, via trach collar of oxygen continuous, and I decided to trial her room air. So I brought in uh, our vitals machine and I had the pulse ox on her finger the whole time assessing how her oxygen sets were, how her heart rate was, was she getting too stressed? Was she doing okay? What was going on? And honestly, she did great. Her O2 sats didn't drop below 94 the whole time. The majority of the time, they were 99, 100, um, other than when she was coughing or clearing her throat because she does have secretions. Um, but yeah, so that was my excitement of the day. Um, we we're pending her passing mirror valve coming in from Central Supply. And then we also scheduled a swallow study for tomorrow. That way we could see how she's actually doing. Um, because of her severity when she came in, uh, from what I saw in the report, I didn't see any swallow study done prior to GPEG placement or tracheostomy, which were done on the same day. So I need a baseline. So when we transition her to her next facility, they'll know what to do, where they're at, and go from there. Um, yeah, the only hiccup with that is I have a doctor's appointment for when I scheduled the swallow study. <laughs> so, um, my really good friend and coworker Presley is going to be conducting the swallow study for me. Um, unless I make it back in time somehow, which I highly doubt. And so, yeah, hopefully she does well and gets to pass and have some sort of food and drink and... Yeah, <laughs> that's my excitement of the day. So this is your basic rundown of a tracheostomy patient. Um, the hard work that goes into it, the dedication, and just knowing that they're not alone um, is the biggest thing. So last week she was feeling very depressed and I was talking with her and she was writing because she had no voice other than head nods were her main communication. Um, so she was writing and she pretty much told me that she felt alone and lonely and it's hard. I mean, it's hard when you go through something like that. And our job is to not only help them to see the light, but also encourage them to continue fighting for that light um, on the good days and the bad days and everywhere in between. So keep that in mind with all the patients you're working with or your family members who go through troubling times. Um, have strokes, have any sort of illness. Um, it's challenging, but they need support more than ever at those times. So yeah, have a wonderful day. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, tell your friends, share it. I'm on social media, The Healthy Speechy, and have a great week. Bye guys.